1990. Mike Eads, Roger Ayers, Burt Smith, and away we go here. The tip of our sonic blockbuster here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, and Trey Jones and Duke with the opening possession. North Carolina starting off in man-to-man. -man. Cole Anthony going head-to-head -head against Trey Jones. And this being senior night, as Jones draws the foul, you can see all three seniors for Mike Krzyzewski in the starting lineup. Jack White, Javon Delorier, and Justin Robinson, who has played big minutes two of the last three games, and Jay has played extremely well. Well, Justin Robinson has given Duke a, a really big lift against both Wake Forest and NC State, and he is such a high basketball IQ player. And of course, the Robinson family, including the Hall of Famer, the Admiral David Robinson, in attendance here for his son's senior night. If you're Roy Williams, not what you wanted to see. Paul Anthony picking up a foul 16 seconds into the game. The starting lineup for the Tar Heels. Armando Baycott was a game time decision. A twisted ankle suffered a few days ago, but he is in there as a starter tonight. Anthony dribbles into trouble, and here comes Duke. One of the ways you stop transition is with your offense. Your offense has to help your defense. And Cole Anthony has been taking very good care of the ball of late, but turned it over by taking it into traffic. Yeah, his last two games, 14 assists to just three turnovers. Both of those games wins for the Tar Heels. Good face by Justin Robinson. Jones short on the three. Good rebound by Baycott. North Carolina needs to go inside and get the ball to Garrison Brooks. He's got a matchup right now in Justin Robinson, but he's stronger than Robinson. Robinson is a little bit taller, a little bit longer. And again, with the seniors starting, that means Vernon Carey is not starting for Duke tonight. They cut with a jump hook. That's where North Carolina's advantage is in this game, to the extent you want to call it an advantage. They are very good inside. When they get the ball in the paint, that puts Duke in a position to foul. And the shots are shorter, gives the big guys a better opportunity to rebound. Robinson not shot from beyond the arc. He has shot the ball extremely well in the last two games in which he's appeared. Another matchup to watch is Brandon Robinson on Cassius Stanley. Robinson didn't play in the first matchup on February 8th in Chapel Hill. He was injured. Robinson banks home a three. Cole Anthony J is yelling out a play. Is there any chance that his teammates can hear what he just said? What? <laughs> Anthony using the screen from Brooks. Brooks has been sensational in recent games. Doesn't get the balance on the jumper, and it's back to Duke. Well, Justin Robinson is a very good shooter. And off the screen roll, the shake action coming up from the corner. I don't think he planned to bank that in, but it doesn't say whether it was banked in or went straight in in the box score. The Warrior, and it is blocked but counted. It'll be a goaltending call, and the bucket will count. Duke is doing a very good job of spreading the floor. And that leaves the middle open. And the seniors, Jack White, Justin Robinson coming out of the ball game, Javon Gloria. And they'll all likely come back in. This is not the typical situation, maybe, where a guy who rarely plays happens to be a senior. They've all been playing, of course, but now you bring in Matthew Hurt, Jordan Goldwire, and Vernon Carey for the Blue Devils. Carey guarding Armando Baycott. That leaves Matthew Hurt on Garrison Brooks. And Brooks far more physical. Robinson got the switch, has Hurt on. Hurt barely played in the first game. Only six minutes. As Robinson knocks down a long jumper over him to bring the heels back within three. That's his 52nd three-point field goal made on the season for Brandon Robinson. He is the leader for this North Carolina team. Goldwire getting around, leaky block. Nice find to Jones. And what a start for the Blue Devils at the offensive end. Anthony coast to coast with the left hand in lane. Boy, what a terrific job of attacking. And Stanley flushes it down with two hands. And a terrific answer. Well, usually that's the kind of thing that North Carolina's transition game would net. 
But Duke very opportunistic after the made field goal. And they get Brooks down to the post against Hurt, trying to exploit that matchup. And he's got a call for the ball. The other team on Anthony to kick to Black. Black for three. Boy, Leaky Black, not a great outside shooter. Just 26% from beyond the arc on the season, but he buried. It's a shot he's got to take. Because that way you have to come out and guard him. That's going to open up some things inside for the Carolina big guys. Hurt step back. Here's a touch for Brooks. And he gets it to go. Carolina's weathered an early storm to get back within one. So North Carolina's always going to play inside out. And any time that Garrison Brooks can touch the ball down in the low post, I think that's a good thing for North Carolina to play through Brooks in the post. Brooks averaging 27 a game his last three games. And again, that points it out. Those are all wins for the Heels. Very strict numbers for the Heels. Gives it up, gets it back, and misses the three, Carey down to the board. Remember, Vernon Carey had 18 points in the first half in Chapel Hill. And Goldwater called for the offensive foul. What a start, what pace here in the early going with Duke leading Carolina by one. Five minutes and change in. Trey Jones, so good in the first game between these two, has come out playing well again here in the game two. Garrison overtime losses and close defeats, but listen to Cole Anthony. They're feeling better about themselves right now. I was never saying I love what it says. It's the scariest bottom seat you've ever seen. We hungry, I mean, we're playing. So I think the way we're playing, we're, the level we're playing at right now, we're a top 10 team in the country easily. I mean, college basketball is having a little bit of a weird year, just not that many great teams. I think at this point, we're turning into a great team. Vernon Carey with a jam to make it a three point game. So, Carolina Jay has beaten NC State, Syracuse, and Wick in their last three games, and they've averaged 90 points per game. Doing it. Now you've got to admire the confidence or optimism by Cole Anthony saying top 10 team. I don't know if they're that, but they're clearly better than they were earlier in the season. They're a much tougher out than they were earlier. And uh, you remember how well this team played against Duke early on in the season. Marvel Big not getting away with a little push there and turns the ball over. But right now Duke's pressure is rattling North Carolina a little bit. Out of that last time out, Duke gave a little one, two, two, three quarter court pressure, forced a turnover. Justin Robinson with a great read of the play to jump in front of Garrison Brooks and try to take it the other way. But right now, it's been the Duke pressure that is limiting North Carolina. Goldwire, the extra pass to Robinson for another three. Duke is moving the ball. And as a result, North Carolina is having to scramble, rotate, and the closeouts have been low. Great feed from Anthony to Brooks, but he can't finish. And Robinson down to the rebound, and another long pass, Jones to Carey, and a foul. With Vernon Carey doing a spectacular job of running the floor. He's able to defend against Garrison Brooks using his chest. And then running down the floor, and Armando Baycott with his hands on him. But Justin Robinson, because of the penetration, the pass to Goldwire, and then not just the extra pass, but the right pass to get it to a waiting Justin Robinson. That's really good basketball by Deuce. And with more on Robinson, here's Holly Rowe. Well, Justin Robinson has had limited minutes all season long, but Duke Krzyzewski, uh, Mike Krzyzewski told us yesterday that he has earned these minutes that he is playing right now. He said he's a sneaky athlete. He's one of the best guys on our team. He is the ultimate friend, and he has earned the time he is getting. I saw him just moments before the game go to every single player on the floor and whisper some words of encouragement. He is the guy that is keeping this team united and together, and he is doing it by his play on the court and his demeanor off the court. Holly, thank you. Yeah, and if you haven't seen Duke in a while, there has been a change in recent games. Minutes for guys like Javon Delorier, Jack White, Matthew Hurt, they are down. Robinson is getting a lot of those minutes as Brandon Robinson knocks one down for Carolina. Robinson missing a number of games games with injury earlier this season. Cole Anthony missed 11. This is only the 11th game out of 31 for the Heels this year where they've had Anthony, 
Robinson and Brooks all in the lineup at the same time. You know, it's key players they've been missing, and Brandon Robinson, one of those key players. But in his last ball game against Wake Forest, he really played well with 18 points. He made five threes, and he's off to a good start shooting the, the deep ball in this game. When he gets his feet set, you know, he can make shots. But the other guy that's done a really good job for North Carolina of late has been Christian Keeling who's come into the ball game. He has exploded offensively and is really starting to knock down, especially mid-range shots. Number 55 in the blue, the drop transfer from Charleston Southern. Jones gets away from the pressure and dukes into the front court with a five-point lead. Five on the clock. Jones knows it. Pull up at the elbow. Battle for the board, won by Deloria. North Carolina right there for the rebound, but they didn't block out. They jumped for it. And Javin Delorier just jumped better and higher. Boy, what a spin move there by Brooks, and Delorier has to commit the foul. You know, it's one thing to be there on the glass. It's another thing to lay your body on someone and keep an opponent from having an opportunity to get an offensive rebound. That time, Javin Delorier just out battling North Carolina. Like, that's three on one. And Delorier came out the victor. Question for you, Jay. Garrison Brooks, who has just had a sensational season, especially recently. Carolina's going to finish at or near the bottom of the ACC, but hasn't this guy had a first-team all-league kind of season? I don't think there's any question. And if North Carolina was you know, middle of the pack or above, I think he'd be first-team all-ACC without question. But then you have to you have to ask, well, who are you going to bump out of there? You know, Jordan Mora, Trey Jones, Vernon Terry, Devin Vassell, I think, are, are on the first team. But then you give it to Mamadi Diakite, the fifth spot, John Mooney. Elijah Garrison Hughes. Brooks makes a great case. Yep. 11.59 to go, Duke leading by five. The best. Not really. 28 points, 6 7. I thought, the, I thought the French were smarter than that. It's really disappointing. My favorite breakfast here. Uh, Fruit Loops. Uh, yeah, your girlfriend, Leah Edmond, is one of the most decorated volleyball players in history. Uh, what's it like? Who's the better athlete first? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Favorite sport outside of basketball. So, uh, favorite soccer team. Awesome. Now, Ochai Abaji says he's the better soccer player than you. Is that true? Mm -hmm. No, that's not correct. <laughs> I'm told you were the mascot in a game. How'd you become the mascot? One game. I was a mascot for one game. You know, once you're a mascot for one game, you're always a mascot, right? Who needs to be told twice? Matt, 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 Matt. Three times. Matt. <laughs> if you couldn't play basketball, what sport? Football. I'd probably say baseball. Uh, what what's position are you playing baseball? Uh, outfield. Get every ball going over the fence. All right, what's the toughest thing about playing with Cassius Winston? Um, getting in play defense. What's the toughest thing about playing with them? The catching the ball. That's <laughs> 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 He messes up your assist. Big guys and little guys not getting along. So what else is new? Uh, great to see Obi Toppin on there. Player of the Year candidate. And great scene at Dayton this morning for Dayton. It was a fantastic scene at Dayton. And Dayton is a, obviously a, a, an outstanding basketball team. But what a basketball culture that Anthony Grant has there with the Flyer program. Just fantastic. Javon Delorier just picked up his second foul. He's gone to the bench. Robinson misses a three. And Carolina, better than nine minutes into the game, down by three on the road here in Durham. For the most part, Duke hasn't allowed much transition for North Carolina. And North Carolina's had difficulty running half-court offense because of Duke's pressure pushing him further out on the floor. And Cole Anthony's going to have to be more proactive, not only getting the ball inside, but putting the ball in the deck. Gary off the foot of Anthony, out of bounds, still Duke ball. Tomorrow, it's our NBA Sunday Showcase on ABC as the Lakers take on the Clippers. Our coverage gives with NBA Countdown. And 3 o'clock Eastern Time. A lot of people saying that could be a Western Conference Final. And what a matchup that would be between LeBron and his buddies and Kawhi and his buddies. Cassius Stanley. A little bit short. Back on the heels again. Anthony ahead to Keeling. Needs some help and needs it quickly. Can't find it in time as he calls a timeout. We're back in 30.
Duke by three here at Campbell. Four in this game tonight, other than the fact that it's Duke and Carolina. They're always playing for a lot when these two get together. Brooks spins into a double team. Turn around, fade away. No. Baycock is having an outstanding night around the rim at both ends. And he gets back in time to contest Carey. Well, Duke really testing North Carolina in transition, even after a made field goal. What a block by Robinson. Boy, what a sequence up and down and back again the last minute or so. Baycock picking up what looks like another foul. What a terrific job taking the ball to the basket and Justin Robinson blocking that shot. I think Armando Baycock picked up a foul with a push in the back. He did. That's his second, and that's going to bring him out of the game, it looks like. Justin Pierce, that transfer from William and Mary, comes into the game. That is a loss for Carolina, given Baycock's rebounding ability and the way he can run the floor. And his ability to block shots protect the rim, but Baycock averages close to three offensive rebounds per game. Taking those that offensive rebounding capability off the floor limits North Carolina's offensive output. Stanley with Andrew Playcheck on him. And Stanley knocks down the jumper. That's going to be a tough matchup for Andrew Playcheck. And Cassius Stanley knew it, just took that matchup on, went one on one, got a little bit of clearing. Good help by Jack White on the drive by Paul Anthony. Playcheck at times starting this year playing big games when the injuries were at their worst. When the smaller role now, Pierce looked like he had a putback opportunity and instead passed it off. And Jones will bury a three at the other end. And Trey Jones makes a great case for ACC Player of the Year. He does it at both ends of the floor and especially defensively does it at the highest level. And Perry will get consideration, Jordan Wara will get consideration, and I think it's Jones. Knocks it away. Hey, Andrew Playtech has to be ready to shoot when he catches the ball in the corner. He had a wide open shot that he passed out. Brooks will lay it in. Pretty feed from Paul Anthony. Great feed and a terrific job by Garrison Brooks of rolling to the basket. And Jordan Bullwire went to try to block the ball to that shot. He's probably better off trying to take a charge there. They're going to Stanley again, and it pays off again. Just a pretty backdoor cut. Went out to the right wing and immediately turned back. Will step and go to the rim. And right out for Carolina. Baycott's not in the game. Keeling's not in the game. Leaky Black's not in the game. And they're a little bit compromised. Cole Anthony doing it himself. Knocks it down. Gets him back within four. Well, he just made something out of nothing. Carolina trying to run one of their box sets with a little diagonal up screen. They're either going to get a double away or screen for the screener action. They never really got into it. And that forced Cole Anthony, Anthony to just dribble the possession out and get his own shot. And Perry was looking for a touch in the post. Doesn't get it. They try to go over the top to Stanley. Good double team, and it's Carolina ball. Good help by Brandon Robinson. Trying right, to post up catches Stanley down low. And Andrew Playtech doing a nice job of fighting him. But catches Stanley going up against Playtech. Watch him out on the right wing. He's going to step out and immediately go back door. They eliminate help with five outs and Burke. If they were to lose, they would get Virginia Tech. Four point game. Duke leading Carolina. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Robinson hesitates, leaves it a little short. Offensive rebound, Brooks. Up through a double team. Yeah, that is a man's rebound. He got that over the top of DeLorean. Duke throwing down the court and passing ahead. After every score, Duke has been in the, in the starting blocks and sprinting to the other end. And Trey Jones is passing that ball ahead and really putting great pressure on North Carolina's transition defense. Right now, North Carolina, I don't want to say they're jogging back, but they're not sprinting back. Play take and the foul. I'm sorry, Jay. Well, Duke taking yeah. advantage of that. The big guys are not sprinting back. Let's go down to Holly. You guys, you might notice a change in Garrison Brooks. He's wearing these protective glasses. That actually came about, remember, he got poked in the eye at the end of the first Duke-North Carolina matchup. Another poke in the eye, and he's gone to the athletic trainer, Doug Halverson, to get more protection. He's been wearing these the last few games. That gives him more, uh, he just feels more comfortable around the basket. His hands are right where he might be getting poked frequently. 
And they're obviously not bugging him. He has been a star this year, and especially recently for the Heels, who can tie or take the lead right here. In the last three games, Garrison Brooks is averaging 27 points, 10 rebounds, and shooting over 60% from the field. Boy, it looked like a turnover and a runout for Duke. Instead, it's a layup for Baycott. Back into the game with two fouls, and Carolina's tight. And give Baycott credit, because he is going after it with those two fouls. Not hesitating at all. Boy, a lot of contact up top. There has been contact on ball handlers in this game, but you just have to play through it. Jones gets around Anthony. Swatted away by Leaky Black. Here comes Carolina. Good job by Duke to get back in transition. And then Black called for the foul. And Leaky Black was fading away on that shot instead of going straight up. He didn't have to fade away. He chose to. Well, you know, when these two programs get together, that whatever building you're in, great players from that program's past are going to be here to watch it. And tonight is no exception. Grant Hill, one of the best there ever was. Christian Leitner are among the headliners and former Duke stars at Cameron here tonight. Christian Leitner, one of the most decorated players in college basketball history. And I think Grant Hill is the best player Duke's ever today. Tipped up, no good. Offensive rebound by Moore. Double team on Carey. Good pass. And Robinson fouled by Brooks. Boy, did Vernon Carey draw a crowd. He was triple team. And out of the right corner, Justin Robinson making a very intelligent cut to the basket. I mean, that's three guys around him. Somebody has to be open, and that somebody was Justin Robinson. He was alert enough to make a cut along the baseline right to the bucket. You know, until about two weeks ago, Justin Robinson was the 11th man in what was basically a 10-man rotation for Duke. But as we mentioned, things have changed. Other guys, DeLaurier, Hurt, White, not getting as many minutes lately, and Robinson is playing big minutes at important times now for the Blue Devils. And even though he wasn't playing a ton of minutes, you know, he's a captain on this team and has really done a, an exemplary job of mentoring the younger players. You know, a lot of times it, it's harder to get leadership from players that aren't playing as much. Usually you expect or need your leadership from the guys that are playing more minutes, but Robinson is a leader without having played a lot of minutes. That's unusual. He's got future coach written all over him, don't you think? A future commissioner, future president, future everything he wants. Black misses the three. Hustle rebound by Moore. Got Jones. What a pass. Bounce pass in transition to make it a three-point game. A Duke's fast break game, whether it's off a make or a miss, has put a ton of pressure on North Carolina's defense. Wide open 17 for the Brooks. No. Robinson the rebound. Brooks was wide open. I don't know that Carolina wants to be settling for jumpers. Good ball movement. Robinson to Jones misses the three. And down to the rebound is Anthony, who had 11 rebounds in the first matchup between these two teams. One of the best guard rebounders in the country. Good no look pass. Wide open. Leaky Black turns on the line as he misses the long jumper. Duke leaving Black open so they can help out on the better offensive players. And Leaky Black is very versatile. He can score, but he's not a big time scorer. Carey with a run. And it's a five-point game. Well, Justin Robinson doing a nice job of clearing that right elbow that gave Carey the space, and Carey just attacked that space. Baycott had it, but lost it to Jones. Shuttle pass to Moore, who's back. And Duke on a run here to take us to the under four media time. Doing a great job in the ACC. Incredible job that Leonard Hamill's done with his team and Tony Bennett. Think about this, they lost four of six in the month of January, Virginia. And think how the way they finished. Those two coaches, incredible jobs with their teams. All right, and LaFonso, you want to get to this game. What has stood out to you that Duke's doing well? Trey Jones has done a great job of managing the game, and Justin Robinson has given them a tremendous snap. For North Carolina to win this game, they've got to stop shooting so many jump shots, get it inside, and drive the basketball. All right, we'll hear more for them at the half. 
All right, Holly, guys, thank you. Armando Baycott back on the bench with a couple of fouls. So Garrison Brooks is the inside guy exclusively right now. Delorier's on him. Can the heels get it to him? Well, right now, Duke's been doing a good job not only of pressuring but loading up help. So it's very difficult to get the ball inside because you're throwing it into a crowd. Seven-point lead for Duke. 325 to go in the first half. Duke winning the first matchup in overtime in Chapel Hill. 98-96 about a month ago. Jordan Goldwater, no long rebound out to Jones. Stanley into the chest of Brooks. And over the back for the foul. Roy Williams talking to us before the game about the jacket he is wearing tonight. Here's what Roy Williams does. After the game, he puts the stat sheet from a previous game in the pocket of the jacket as he hangs the jacket up in his closet. If it wasn't a good game, if they lost, that jacket is out of the rotation. And he said, kind of tongue in cheek, but not really. A lot of jackets are out of the rotation this year. They're 13 and 17. So he went to a jacket, Jay, that is undefeated on the year. Then again, it's also the first time he says he's worn his jacket. So it's O and O. But he's going deeper into the closet this year, given the losses they've sustained. Yeah, he's not superstitious, but why risk it? Right. <laughs> Blocked by Jones, followed by Brooks, and a friendly bounce for the heels to get him back within five. Boy, a terrific block by Javin Delorier on the initial action. But how about Garrison Brooks? Second and third effort. He's just had a spectacular year. Jones all the way in a foul call. If it's Brooks, it is. It'll be his second. And it is number two on Garrison Brooks. So they weren't going to call that if the shot had gone in, but since it was missed, they felt they needed to call it. We mentioned the tough losses sustained by North Carolina, not only in the Duke game. They had a crusher against Virginia. They had a late three to beat them up in South Bend, double overtime at Virginia Tech. But as Roy Williams will tell you quite openly, the other teams made better plays at the end of games than his teammate. There were so many of these games here where they needed one stop to win the game, and they couldn't get that stop. And that can be a self-fulfilling prophecy, too, that after a while you start looking for the next thing to go wrong. And I do think part of that, that was part of North Carolina's issue. But they fought through it. Now they've got some of their key players back healthy. And they are much tougher out. Yeah, whether they're the 14 or the 11 in the ACC tournament, which will be determined by the outcome tonight, they're not your typical 14 or 11. And again, to make the NCAA tournament, obviously, they're going to have to win the ACC tournament given the kind of season they've had. How about Walker Miller getting minutes because Brooks and Baycott both have two fouls, and Miller knocks one down. Well, he played in the game in Chapel Hill and gave some quality minutes to North Carolina, but how about the job that Captain Stanley did defensively on that last possession on Cole Anthony? Cole Anthony just the last second found an open Miller. Stanley, Robinson down, called for the foul, and shaken up as well. I wonder if the officials are going to have to look at this. Hopefully not, because that looked like it was a straight basketball. Boy, and the senior has had a tough year. Multiple angle, uh, ankle injuries, a neck problem sustained in a car accident, a rib issue, and it looked like the left arm, maybe the outside of the elbow, as Stanley went into his move, that caught Robinson right there. You know, maybe that is going to be a... A flagrant one, or at least close to it. The key is, was were his arms more up than out? And I don't think that's going to be an issue of in the cylinder or anything like that, because st stay key. Robinson technically, I guess, guess did come into him a little bit, and that was the foul was on Robinson. But doesn't look like it's going to be anything more than a basketball play. We hate to see Brandon Robinson down because you know, that game that he had earlier at NC State, and he kept coming back in and coming back in and would not give up. I mean, that was a just a stud performance that he put on. And he's a senior and gets a, a nice ovation here from the folks at Duke as he walks off the court under his own power and hopefully nothing serious. Looks like they're going to take him right into the locker room with a minute 41 to go in the half and have a closer look at it. 
So here's where some of the combinations get a little bit unusual for Roy Williams. Brooks and Baycott each have a couple of fouls, and Robinson just went to the locker room. So it's Pierce, Miller, Keeling, Playtech, and Anthony in the game right now for Carolina. Well, the unusual lineup has been usual for North Carolina this year. Tonight in our NBA Saturday primetime game, we've got the Warriors hosting the 76ers. Our coverage tips with a jump at 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC and also on the ESPN. And now you can watch the Warriors with Steph Curry back. Miller shuffled the feet. A tough spot to have to dump the ball off to Walker Miller. That was should not have been his turnover. He'll get it, but that was really the decision of Cole Anthony that led to that. And with the foul trouble in the Robinson situation, feels like a minute and a half where if you're Carolina, you just kind of want to tread water and not let this one get any further, not let the lead get any bigger for Duke going into halftime. Carey. Haven't seen a lot of him doing that tonight. He's so efficient down there, and eventually he's fouled. So it's been difficult for Bernard Carey to establish any kind of rhythm in this game. He's been when he's been in there, he's been double and, and at times triple team. Gary's had an outstanding freshman season. He'll be in the conversation for ACC Player of the Year. But as you said before, uh, Trey Jones, you know, sometimes teammates split the vote a little bit too. But Trey Jones just might nose him out for the award. Jordan War is going to get a lot of consideration. Pretty impressive numbers for Bernie Gary Jr. He's in the top ten in the Atlanta Coastal scoring, rebounding, block shots, and field goal percentage. He is the only ACC player to be in the top ten in those four categories. Pierce with a full head of steam. Can't bank it home, and Carey comes up with it. But then turns it over. Now this last minute five of the first half is important. If North Carolina can get a bucket and a stop, or a couple buckets and a stop, this game looks a lot different going into the second half. Conversely, if Duke can get a stop and a bucket, they can put some distance between a double-digit lead between themselves and North Carolina. Anthony around Jones into the chest of Carey and called for the offensive foul. Duke has made Cole Anthony into a one-on-one -on -one player. And he just went one-on-five. And you applaud the... The courage that he takes the ball in the back of Bernie Carey right there because the defense was not made to move at all. They basically looked like a zone, even though it was man to man. It was one on five, and that's what led to the turnover on the offensive foul. And now with Anthony picking up his second foul, Jeremiah Francis, who has missed uh, a good chunk of the year with injuries, he has come in. Just to play this last minute. Jones, no. Follow, no. Yes. On the third opportunity, Wendell Moore, and it's the biggest lead of the night for the Blue Devils. And to the point just made before, if Duke gets a stop here and another score, that's some serious distance going into halftime. And Jones wants that one back as he's called for the foul. Wendell Moore had a fantastic game in the first game. 17 points, 10 rebounds, and the game-winning basket off an offensive board. And... The effort there with the right hand, excuse me, the left hand to keep it alive and then the right hand to tip it in. Talk about second effort. That was impressive by Wendell Moore. Who, of course, had the tip and then the game winning bucket in the first game in Chapel Hill. About a six second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. You have to expect that Keeling wants to get the shot here. It'll be Francis. And how about that? Toe on the line with a long two for a guy who's hardly played in recent weeks. Jones. And it'll be an eight-point lead for Duke going to halftime here at Cameron. Duke won the first one in overtime in Chapel Hill, up by eight, 20 minutes in here in Durham. After this timeout, the Jeep halftime report, Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, and Alfonso Ellis. going just four points in that first half well we need to get the ball inside better by settling for either a jump shot or their own drive instead of working to get the ball inside 
love to think 15 to 0 in fast breaks, Holly. We've never played like that, but that means they're either great players and we're sorry, or they're just hustling more and we're the soft team right now, so we got to get better there. All right, Brandon Robinson, how is he? I don't think we'll have him back, but I'm not sure. Thanks, Coach. Holly, thank you. Ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And in the moments after Holly conducted that interview, we did receive official word from Steve Kirshner, the Sports Information Director for North Carolina, that Brandon Robinson will not return tonight. That's why you see Christian Keeling in the game as he knocks down the jumper. Well, Keeling knocks down the jumper. That's really the first easy basket that North Carolina's had in a while. And it looks like Trey Jones is going to pick up an offensive foul. Keeling there to take the charge. Second foul on Jones. I'm telling you. It's amazing in college basketball now. All you got to do is fall down. Heels down by six. Trying to extend their winning streak to four. Anthony No, offensive rebound, Brooks, blocked by Robinson. Robinson with his, his length and perfectly timed. How about Duke running again? Uh, give Vernon Perry credit. He has run the floor hard and changed ends from defense to offense. And usually it's the North Carolina big guys that are out running their counterparts. This time it's been Duke that's doing it to North Carolina. Ricky Black made his first shot tonight. And couldn't find the range again. There's Robinson with a hard foul on Baker. Well, Duke in transition. Justin Robinson with the block. And you saw how Vernon Carey, his first three steps, just outran everybody. Now watch after this block. Vernon Carey goes after the ball, and then he takes three quick steps and outran Leaky Black, Armando B Baycott, everybody. It's a great job running the floor. And it's just number five in the play for Trey Jones. Robinson the foul, Baycott at the line. If you would shoot free throws in a hostile building looking into that kind of a scene, do you see it or can you completely block out the students behind the back? Well, you, you try to block it out, but you can see it. Heck, I played in the game one time, the San Diego Chicken was there. <laughs> and he would stand under the basket and open up a, a, like a poster of a, a lady in a bikini or something when you're trying to shoot. And, uh, you have to admit, you laughed at that a couple of times. You hope, hope that Coach Gay didn't catch her. Did you knock down the free throws? Of course I did. Of Gary No. They've got another rebound. Well, they've got plays with great energy at both ends. Yeah, he's going to be a, a great player. And he's had an outstanding freshman year. Jordan Goldwire really making it difficult for Cole Anthony just to get the ball back. Looks inside, Baycott, and another foul. Let's see who this one is on. It'll be on Carey. And Duke's up by seven points, but it's primarily because of their defense. Obviously, we've pointed out how they've run the floor and gotten things in transition. But North Carolina, the first half, only had three assists. And that means they were having to create on their own. They're not getting it off their offense. They didn't get anything in transition. Such a unique environment. And Jay, such a unique vantage point for us here at the Cameron Indoor Stadium. Up here in the crow's nest, this is our view. Ball guy number one, ball guy number two, a clean view. This is how we see it. You know, our director, Doug Holmes, is a baldist. He is. He's End baldism. <laughs> He's a hair bully is what he is. He just loves the ball shot. But this is, uh, I don't know of any, do you work in any other building where we have this kind of a view? No. There's a walk there yeah, on Carey. Boy, Duke did a really nice job. He got a little horn set and really spread the floor nicely. That, uh, the middle was wide open for Vernon Carey to just roll to the basket. If he'd gone up right away, that would have been an easy layup or dunk. Carolina hanging around down by seven. Had some foul trouble at the end of the first half. Had to really improvise and who was on the floor. And now we find out without Brandon Robinson the rest of the way. Nice work. Brooks and a foul. But Cole Anthony is having to work so hard just to get the ball back once he gives it up. And whether it's Jordan Goldwire or Trey Jones guarding him, they've done a really nice job of staying with him and limiting his ability to get the ball back because he's such a dangerous offensive player. 
Number two on Vernon Carey, Brooks at the line. Tomorrow, our NBA Sunday showcase on ABC is a beauty. It'll be the Lakers and the Clippers with our coverage tipping with the NBA countdown at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Lakers have already clinched a postseason berth. Have there ever been a, a conference finals where the two teams didn't have to travel? Well, they shared a building? I wouldn't think so. Not, not to my knowledge. And, and what a matchup it would be tomorrow, obviously, and if they were to meet in a playoff series. These two guys would see a lot of one another. LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard. Goldwire, strong drive, no finish. And Brooks down with a rebound. Carolina rush it. Run it. Brooks. Cole Anthony, the floater, is short. Another offensive rebound. And Baycott and Brooks are really getting work done inside right now here in the second half. They're just playing volleyball up off the backboard. And North Carolina brings it back to a one-possession game. Mike Krzyzewski wants to talk it over. But first, he's going to say, tell the official there was a walk on the other end. <laughs> Three-point game here at Cameron. My man, a friendly Canadian, although, as you said before the game, all Canadians are friendly. So it's redundant. They're proposed, but they're friendly. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Carolina back in this game, down by three. And now they turn it over, trying to get the ball inside to Brooks. A lot of contact, but throwing it into traffic was what led to that turnover. But North Carolina hanging some fouls on Duke in the second half because they've been more resolute to get it into the paint. More the drive. Kick to Robinson. And out of the rebound to Leaky Black. And again, Carolina, if you haven't seen a lot of them lately, they're playing their best basketball of the season right now. They've won three in a row, averaging 90 points per game over those three, and they're back within one here at Cameron. North Carolina is being resolute to get the ball into the post and to play through Garrison Brooks that has led them to this one-point game. As Roy Williams said a couple of days ago, it's almost like they get a restart at the ACC tournament. They are still playing for something. They know they have to win it to go to the dance. And how about somebody who's living life right on senior night? Justin Robinson has banked in a three and then gotten a great bounce on that one. Is that double figures for him for the second straight game? It is. He has become a factor for Duke here late in the season. Allison Williams, after the NC State game on Big Monday, asked him, have you ever been in the post-game interview? And he said, nope. <laughs> First time. <laughs> he may be in another one. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski called him a late bloomer, as highly reported in the first half, said he's as good a friend to his teammates as any player he's ever had. And there's Cassius Stanley with a corner jumper. Well, he needs to get going. He had 22 points in the last meeting between these two teams. And if Duke is going to advance as deep as they like in the NCAA tournament, Captain Stanley is going to have to be a big part of it. Boy, it looked like it should have been a, a walk there on Anthony, but no. And they wind up with a bucket on an off-balance shot by Garrison Brooks. Really unusual, but the referee is probably are going to tell Mike Krzyzewski he's allowed to pick the ball up. But that looked like a, a walk. and Baycott the foul. Well, Justin Robinson off of a 10-point performance against NC State on Monday with the corner three, gets it to go in, and the Admiral. The basketball player himself, Cole's dad here, cheering on his son at Cameron. As we mentioned, so many Duke alumni in the house, including Carlos Boozer, a member of the 2001 National Championship team. Shane Battier is here as well. So the NCAA champion is a six-point lead right now for the Blue Devils. And we've got a little breaking news. Here's Holly. Well, the North Carolina folks have come over and let me know that they reevaluated Brandon Robinson and he's able to re-enter this game. He's in right now, guys. It's a big lift because he averages 12 points a game and can help space the floor as an extra shooter for North Carolina down the stretch. Yeah, initially, we were told not going to return. And here he is back on the court. We'll see if that gives the heels a spark. But he's also one of North Carolina's best defenders. He can switch off on just about anyone, one through four. Baycott. 
Double team comes from Wendell Moore. Five to shoot. Deep one for Robinson. Another rebound for Baycott. He just pursues the ball and always seems to go after it with both hands. That was a huge bucket by Armando Baycott. And how about 11 points and 10 rebounds for the freshman Armando Baycott. His 10th double-double on the season. Carey going to work inside, and he's fouled. Yeah, if that's on Baycott, that's his... That's his fourth foul. And that's a problem, huh? Carolina. What? No, it was on Robinson. They've given it to Robinson. What a terrific job by Baycott of really blocking out as the offensive rebounder, blocking out Justin Robinson, getting inside position. He really worked hard to go after that. And that's a pretty good company. I'm on the Baycott's in wow. for double doubles. Antoine Jamison with 13 and 96. Sam Perkins in 81 with nine. And Perkins that year was the ACC tournament MVP as a freshman. Is there any Carolina big guy had longer arms than Sam Perkins? You speak from experience playing against him. Baycott again, Jim. He is just dominating the offensive glass, and Mike Krzyzewski going to counter with Javon Delorier, a more experienced player and a better athlete. There he slips the screen. Jones finds him. And a foul on Baycott, and he is beside himself. That is number four. Let's take a look at Vernon Carey. Top of the three-point line here. He is going to come set a screen, just slip it right to the basket. And Garrison Brooks has to pick him up, but he also has to recover to Justin Robinson, who's spacing at the three-point line. Left a little bit too early. And Baycott trying to get back to Vernon Carey wound up fouling him from behind. The call came late. And I don't think it would have been called if Vernon Carey had made this bucket. But when he missed it, I mean, it was way late, the call. But we've seen that a couple times in this game. And a big loss for the Tar Heels with Baycott going to the bench with 12 and a half minutes to go in this game. Justin Pierce is in. Carey will sit down. And that's Jordan Goldwire comes in. And obviously that's a huge difference. Now they're not two big guys for North Carolina, so you can give more attention on Garrison Brooks defensively. Offensive glass has been a huge part of the reason why Carolina's been able to hang around. They go inside to Brooks, and he draws the foul. Just a little diagonal up screen to get Garrison Brooks isolated on the right block and get the defender on the high side. He did a great job of sealing off and opening up that space to be able to get the pass to lead him into his move on the right side of the basket. So Brooks at the line. As we mentioned, 27 points per game in his last three coming into this one. And he's been great in ACC games. And he's second in the league in scoring in ACC play at over 18 a game. And just under nine rebounds, 55% from the field. He has been an absolute workhorse. And I'll tell you, Dan, that free throw line has got to be a big difference if North Carolina wants to win in this building. They've got to get to the free throw line. Duke got there in the first half, and North Carolina didn't. And Carolina got there in game one, but they missed so many. They were 21 of 38 from the free throw line in the first game. Offensive foul, Wendell Moore Jr. And a timeout on the floor as we go under 12. Carolina, Duke, no surprise regardless of the standings, the records. It's a close game. It's an exciting game. The Heels trying to piece as they knock off San Diego State. Does that knock San Diego State off the one line? Joe? Well, I think it actually helps San Diego State. Obviously, it helps Utah State because they're in the tournament now. But I actually think that's helpful to San Diego State because now they can be the two seed in the West with Gonzaga being the one seed rather than being the one seed maybe in the East. Uh, I, I think that actually helps the Aztecs overall in their chances of making a Final Four. Tip in by Justin Pierce. Carolina continuing to excel on the offensive glass. Does that move maybe Dayton up to the one line? It very well could. Obviously, Dayton has to has to continue to win the Atlantic 10 tournament starting this week as well. So Justin Pierce, I think that's his 51st offensive rebound. He's an excellent offensive rebounder. Robinson, Goldwater stays in front of him. Carolina can tie or take the lead. 
It won't go for Brooks, but it's another foul on Jabba DeLoria. And more free throws coming for Carolina. That's number four on DeLoria. Carolina has played better defense in this second half. They haven't really gotten their transition game going, but at least they were able to put some more pressure on Duke's transition defense by getting down the floor just a little bit quicker, and they are getting the ball into the paint via the pass. Sports Center tonight after Washington and Arizona with John Anderson and Kenny Maine. They will take a closer look at Trey Young and the Hawks taking on John Moran and the Grizzlies. A wrap up of this big battle between Carolina and Duke and post fight coverage of UFC 248. Again, one of the reasons that you don't want to settle for jump shots, not that you don't take an open shot after getting a paint touch, but that you don't want to settle is because you don't give yourself the opportunity to get fouled. That's why you have to attack the paint, have to attack the rim, because you can get to the free throw line, the most efficient place to score on a basketball court. Perry back in for Duke, hurt as well. Shot box at three. Perry muscles it in, follows it up. Perry knew that he missed it. And when you're taking the shot inside and you know you missed it, you have the inside track to get in the offensive rebound. Anthony, a tough one. Jones got a piece of it. It's almost like Cole Anthony a little bit frustrated because whether it's been Goldwire or Jones, he cannot get the ball back once he gives it up. He got it off that little curl and took a shot that Roy Williams would rather he didn't take. Anthony just two for ten, four points to carry for three. Long rebound to Jones. Right back in the field for the finish. Well, just a great cut after the initial shot and long rebound. A terrific cut by Vernon Carey. Black to a wide open Robinson. And a big three for the heels. What an answer. And how tough is Brandon Robinson? I mean, it's game after game, he's been battling injury, whether it's the ankle or at NC State, the ribs. Takes one in the chops, looks like he'll be out for the game, yet he comes back. He keeps coming. Carey again, and another assist for Jones. Uh, Carey is becoming a dominant force in this second half. Duke is moving him around from that side in. What a back screen by Brandon Robinson, just not good communication. When you're guarding Robinson, you've got to be prepared to take the cutter, Garrison Brooks. And you have to have more pressure on the ball to take away vision of the passes. And Jay Brooks now with 23 points on the night. And a foul on Anthony. Well, Vernon Carey, Mike Krzyzewski moving Carey around on the floor. He's not just on the low block, going one-on-one -on -one and spinning back into the lane. Knew he missed it after knocking Brooks back. And zero pressure from Cole Anthony on Trey Jones, just able to pick him apart and getting the ball inside. Then off the horn set, the little screen rolled to the basket. And a terrific pass again by Trey Jones. had the feel like Duke should be up 10. Yes. And North Carolina is scrapping and fighting and staying within one possession. And they are not looking for a moral victory here tonight with all the heartbreaking defeats they have suffered this season. Again, they're going into the ACC tournament as either an 11 seed or the 14. Georgia Tech ineligible, so Carolina would be last going into the tournament if they lose tonight. Brooks can't finish. I was surprised he was that wide open. And North Carolina's got to put Bernie Perry in the ball screen situations and make him guard. Perry just keeps running the floor and running the floor. Brooks could not catch up to him. Justin Pierce had to pick him up, and that's advantage Carey that far into the paint. Robinson checking back in now for Duke. Brooks just you know, took the goggles off. Well, he gave you the report a little bit earlier. He's been scratched in the eye two, three times this year, but he just got rid of him. Carolina has never led. The game's been tied on a couple of occasions. Yeah, Got to go back to Vernon Carey. Stanley for three. 
he consistently knocks down that shot, look out. A guy who makes a lot of noise is at kind of a quiet 16 tonight, but Cassius Stanley is doing his part for Duke. He's really the key. Brooks just keeps on scoring. 25 now. He has just been spectacular. And his last, now it's his last four games. His numbers are off the charts. Carry inside with a chance for three. Duke is putting Vernon Carey in ball screen situations where he is the screen. This time, just a simple slip to the bucket. It's a 20 points and 10 rebounds or more in either category. And he has been dominant in this game. He's got 20 points, 8 rebounds. Stuck on the block where he's easy to double team and he has taken advantage of it. He has been a load for North Carolina to handle. Let's get more with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, if you think about Vernon Carey is really making amends for the last game against North Carolina. In the second half last game, he didn't score at all, fouled out with over four minutes to play. Much different second half impact for the, soft, for the freshman. There, the 18 in the first half. He did a great job in the first half in that game in North Carolina. But part of the issue is North Carolina doesn't have both its big guys on the floor. So Vernon Carey can attack without Armando Baycott out there with Garrison Brooks. It's strictly one-on-one, -on -one, big guy to big guy. Everybody else is spread out. Well, Anthony with just his third field goal of the night, and that's uh, one question is when does Roy Williams bring Baycott back in? He's been on the bench for several minutes with four fouls. And we have our answer as he just got up off the bench to head to the scores table. Jones for three. Boy, coming back to school another year, working on that jumper. His three-point percentage is 10% higher this year than it was last year as a freshman. Not sure how many point guards this year have combined the offensive capabilities and the defensive prowess of Trey Jones. He plays both ends of the floor at a really high level, and not everybody does that. Seven-point lead Duke. Tipped by Anthony, Robinson recovers. And here comes the ball screen from Vernon Carey. He was open, he had Robinson on, and now Garrison's recovered. And Brooks recovers again, helps out on Moore, and Moore turns it over. Three on two, Carolina. And a foul on Robinson. Back down to Holly. Armando Baycott is checking back in the game right now, guys. He's been out for an extended period, in part due to foul trouble, but in part because they were retaping that right ankle of his that has been an issue. He didn't play in their last game. He's limping a little bit now as he tries to get that tape just right, but they're trying to get him back in now because they did not have an answer for Vernon Carey Jr. Well, that, that's the thing about the Carolina injuries, not just the guys who missed games, and so many have. Baycott has played a number of games, limited minutes because of injuries. Robinson, as you documented, Jay, played games with injuries. Leaky Black played with a, a sore foot earlier in the year. It's been very rare where Roy Williams has had anywhere close to his full complement of players. And that's been a tremendous difficulty. And I don't think this would have been a, a vintage North Carolina team, but I think, as we said very early in the year, North Carolina is far better than they were playing. And I think now, especially over the last five games or so, the last three, without question, you're, you're seeing that North Carolina had a lot more in them than they showed earlier in the year. Anthony missed 11 games. Robinson missed nine, and on and on it goes. Now, you got to believe, had they had reasonable health, they might be on the right side of the bubble. So many heartbreaking one-point, two-point overtime losses. Robinson into Carey for two more. They're spreading the floor, and Vernon Carey has the middle all to himself. Yeah! Very difficult shot by Anthony. He wanted a foul call, didn't get it. Yeah! 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 Robinson and Carey up top. Robinson can play the high low because he can make that three-point shot. You have to respect it, and that's going to be one-on-one -on -one in the post for Vernon Carey. Throwback. 
Finds Baycott. Finds Brooks. Brooks got it back. And eventually Robinson. Boy, they are getting after it on both sides on the glass. And Justin Robinson is having himself quite a senior night, isn't he? Well, he's played so strong at both ends of the floor. Good be by Robinson denying Stanley the chance to come and take a pass. Robinson for three. His Hall of Fame dad loves it as much as anybody here at Cameron. That's North Carolina settling. They needed a score there. And that gives Duke the, about four minutes to go in regulation, a 10-point lead, and the ball to increase this lead. That's a poor offensive possession for North Carolina. Robinson with 13 points, five rebounds, three blocks tonight. And now Stanley buries a three from the corner. And the lead just keeps on growing right now for Duke. It's their largest lead of the night. How would I describe? Played a ton of minutes throughout the course of the season, but has been a big factor for Duke in the last three ball games. He has 13 points in this game. He's played both ends of the floor. He's knocked down four three-point field goals. Blocked a shot. He has been a floor spacer that's given Vernon Carey some space to work inside, where Carey has been a dominant force, and his father, David Robinson, who took Navy to the Elite Eight and is in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame is watching his son move one step closer to his second straight post-game interview. <laughs> 22 minutes tonight for Robinson, and he's earned every single one of them, as has been the case in recent games for him, becoming a big part of the Duke rotation late in the season. If North Carolina is going to get back in this, they can't have empty possessions on the offensive end. Robinson with a three. Down to ten. Timeout Roy Williams. Another gutsy performance from Brandon Robinson. A lot of respect for him as a player. Robinson just coming off the stagger and Cat locked into the four seed regardless of the outcome of this game. North Carolina came out with a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one. full court press. They couldn't get a trap because Jordan Goldwire did such a great job of catching the ball and then breaking the pressure. And a foul call against Garrison Brooks. Roy Williams not happy with the call. He thought that Vernon Carey might have pushed off a little bit as Garrison Brooks was trying to deny him that position on that angle cut. There's been a ton of contact in this game at both ends of the floor. Mike E's trying to explain to Garrison Brooks why they called the foul. Nice ovation for Robinson as he sits down. Moore back in. And Perry at the free throw line again. Already seven for nine. Perry worked so hard to get open. And he's so productive. And that's his 24th point. This is two huddles ago. Roy Williams. Think he's given up on the season? Think this doesn't matter to him? He doesn't want to put that coat out of the rotation. <laughs> that's, that's a nice thing. And again, a loss tonight. They'll go in as the 14 seed in the ACC tournament. But I don't know how many teams want anything to do with the Heels, who, even if they lose this one, are clearly a dangerous team. And they'll have to win out. They'll have to get the automatic bid to go to the dance. They know that. Well, that's the kind of night it's been around the basket for North Carolina. Baycott with a one-foot shot. Missed it. 
Garrison Brooks with what he would consider to be an easy stick back couldn't get it to go down. Now here's the scramble for North Carolina looking to trap at every opportunity. Back to the free throw line again for the Blue Devils. Barring a, a whale of a finish for Carolina, this will be the first losing season in the incredible 32 year career as a head coach for Roy Williams. He's never had a losing season either with Kansas or Carolina. Just remarkable. As we mentioned, above 500 in each of the previous 31 seasons, 20 or more wins in a row. Nine straight appearances in the NCAA tournament, but they'll have to do something remarkable in Greensboro if that streak is going to continue. Anthony with a crossover takes a bump and he'll head to the line. And Jordan Goldwire in this ballgame may not have scored a lot of points, but he's really done a good job defensively. And Duke is in a position in the last 223 of regulation with a 14 point lead here, perhaps to win this game. But they've done it with their defense as much as anyone. And it's really been a, a solid defensive effort by Duke. As you look at the top four, Jay heading into Greensboro, Florida State, Virginia, Louisville, Duke seated that way. Is it anybody's turn? Yes, you can make a case for, for any of the top four. And I think anybody outside the top four is going to have to do something extraordinary in order to take on the ACC tournament championship. I think it'll be different, difficult, even as well as Virginia has played. You get into postseason play and you have so many one possession games. You have to think that that maybe you get clipped in, in a game postseason, but because they control tempo so well, Kia Clark has controlled the game. And Kia Clark's averaging six assists a game in incredible low possession games. And his, his assist rate has to be has to be number one. And it seems like nobody, no team is more comfortable playing in those one possession games like in Virginia because every single game of theirs seems to be. Yeah, that's a, they're just rhythm disruptors. That's what they do. So it's incumbent upon the other team. You're not going to speed them up. You better, you better learn to play at their tempo and have patience. Well, that is a foul. That's crazy. There's been so much contact throughout this game. And with the shot clock down to six, eventually there is a foul. And that'll put Duke back on the line. Jones, a solid free throw shooter at 75 percent. Single handedly brought Duke back from what looked like a sure defeat in the first game in Chapel Hill. As Carey goes out, Robinson comes back in. Uh, Jones at one point scored 15 consecutive Duke points, bridging the end of regulation. And oddly enough, when Vernon Carey got in foul trouble and fouled out of the game in the second half, that's when Duke was able to make that run because they had a lineup in that could really spread the floor, then they could drive the ball. And they put a ton of pressure with North Carolina playing two big guys to draw them away from the basket, and that allowed them to get so many drives. Terrific drive and pick there by Anthony, the bucket for Leaky Black, but it's still an 11-point game. It was closer for most of the night. We hit a bunch of threes a few minutes ago. They are 10 for 20 from three-point range tonight. One of the big reasons why they enjoy an 11-point lead. Jordan Goldwire going to the line. He's a 61, 62% free throw shooter. So Christian Keelan doing a, a good job of picking the right guy to foul, at least percentage-wise, on the floor. Double bonus, two shots. Worked awfully hard tonight. Played through some ankle discomfort. And the heels just hope that he's ready to go on Tuesday. Again, as one of the bottom four seeds in the ACC tournament. Now the game's coming up quick for the Tar Heels. North Carolina's got to get the ball to the rim. They can't mess around here. Brooks fouled by Robinson. And the last thing that Duke wants to do in this situation is foul. Stop the clock. 
and then North Carolina can score with no time going off the clock and then set up a press. Two for Brooks, still down by 11 with just over a minute to go. North Carolina looking to go for a steal, get an initial trap, but then they're going to have to foul. And Jones is fouled as he crosses into the front court. took over that last win at North Carolina and he said that he wanted to be like his big brother Tyus. I was actually talking with Tyus last week and he said he was in his hotel room in Washington getting ready to play for the Memphis Grizzlies when he saw his little brother with the late game heroics against North Carolina. He said I was screaming jumping on the bed. It's just incredible that Tyus Jones hit a game a tying shot to force it to overtime in 2015. Little brother Trey did the exact same thing. That was pretty dang cool. It absolutely was, and do you think we'll ever see that kind of a sequence again? An intentionally missed free throw. He gets it back, has it knocked away, gets the ball back, and then hits a jumper to force overtime. And remember, Carolina went up by five in overtime, only for Duke to come back again and win it. And it looks like they're going to win this one as well. He just went to a 2-3 zone to try to limit penetration, make North Carolina try to knock down a shot. Roy Williams telling his team no fouls. So senior night will wind up with a victory for the Duke Blue Devils. They will sweep the regular season series from Carolina. And they will go to the ACC tournament as the four seed. Robinson, another block, his fourth on the night. Jack White, Jabba Delorier, and Justin Robinson all will address the crowd after the game in the final game of their careers here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And that'll do it. Carolina fights hard, but too much from Duke. A 13-point win. And their 25th victory on the season as they beat Carolina for the second time this season. Duke got it done with defense, and that defense started their break in the first half. 15 to nothing in fast break points, and in the second half, it was Trey Jones and Vernon Carey. A look at the bracket starting Tuesday in Greensboro. The Tuesday games on ACC Network, then ESPN and ESPN2 take over after that. Duke, the four seed, coming into Greensboro. A big night for the Blue Devils. They get balance scoring from a number of players. Carey with 25, Jones with 21, Stanley with 19. As they beat Carolina 89 to 76 and head into the ACC tournament on a winning note.